Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with the third part of my Sands of Time tutorial for After Effects. Now, if you've already done parts one and two, you'll already have your engraved text in stone and your sandstorm reveal. Now, before we get on to part three, there's one thing I didn't do in part two that I'd just like to do here, and that's just add a little bit of drop shadow to the uh, sandstorm reveal. Now the default settings are a little bit too dark, so uh, twirl down the drop shadow settings and just drop the opacity down to 25%. And that'll give it that sen a little bit more of a sense of depth underneath it. So uh, sorry I forgot to put that in part two, but it's done now. Let's move on. Okay, so part three of this tutorial deals with the text to sand component. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is duplicate the existing text layer. So select it and hit Control and D. Now we'll remove all the effects we put on previously, so take the blending mode back to normal, twirl it down and delete the layer styles. Go to your character panel and remove the stroke. And that'll just drop it all down to uh, a normal piece of text that matches the engraved text beneath. Swap back to the fill color, select the eyedropper and choose a nice sandy color from your sandstorm reveal. Okay, two more steps. Right click, select layer styles and inner shadow. Go to the layer styles properties, twill down inner shadow and drop the opacity down to about 25 and the distance to 2. And that'll just give it that recessed look that makes it look as if it's uh, embedded in the existing engraving. And finally, in the uh, Effects and Presets panel, find your Noise Effect. Drag that onto the Duplicator Text layer. Select 10% and uncheck the Use Color Noise. And that will match the effect that we created for the Sandstorm, just minus the uh, linear blur, the directional blur. Okay, so the next step here is to have that dissolve. And we're just going to use the mask that we created for the sandstorm reveal in the sand drift element of the uh, composition. So go back to your sand drift, hit M to bring up the mask properties, select the mask, copy it with Control and C, go back to your duplicate text layer, make sure the uh, timeline indicator is at the beginning of the timeline, and hit Control and V to paste it. Now we will just need to tweak this a little bit because, uh, as you can see, all of the action is happening beneath the sandstorm. So we just need to uh, offset it a little bit. So hit M to bring up the mask properties. Select both of the keyframes and just drag them forward to offset them. Probably about a second will do. And if I scrub through the timeline now, you'll see that the sandstorm passes by and then the text sand fades out. Create another new composition. Again, same uh, composition settings as before, and we'll call this particle particle stroke. Hit OK. Now I'm going to go back to the stone engraving composition, copy the duplicate text layer, and paste it into our new composition. I'm then going to create a new solid, and we'll call this stroke. A couple of things to do. Um, go back to your text, because we don't need any of the uh, effects on it, so just delete the noise effect off it. Hit M to bring up the mask properties. Hit Control X to, to cut the uh, mask from the engraved text and paste it onto the stroke layer. We're just going to remove the uh, feathering from the mask, so take that back down to zero. And you see we get this reveal here. Now that's not quite what we're after, so go to your effects and presets panel, type in stroke, and drag the stroke effect onto your stroke layer. Now the first thing we need to do here is change the paint style from on original image to on transparent. If you don't do this, it'll really, really chew up your processor later on down the line. So make sure this is done here. 
The second thing you need to do is choose a brush size that matches your project. Now, the wider the brush at this stage, the more processor intensive the next stage becomes. So um, I wouldn't go further than uh, four pixels. And we'll just pick the eyedropper and copy the text color to the stroke color. Okay, now the final step for this composition is to right click on stroke, go to blending mode and pick stencil luma. And if I just scrub through the timeline, you'll see that's got rid of the engraved text underneath and created this partial stroke wherever the text used to be. Now that's actually going to form the basis of our particle generation system in the next step. So it's important that you've got this right before you move on. So create another new composition, call it text to sand and hit OK drag the particle stroke into this new composition. There it is. Go to your effects and presets panel and type in particle, select the particle playground effect and drag it on to your particle stroke layer. Now the default settings for this give us this uh, cannon in the middle which is exactly what we don't want. So twirl down the cannon settings and just change the particles per second to zero to get rid of that entirely. What we want to replace it with is a layer exploder. So twirl down the layer exploder and in the explode layer drop down select your particle stroke. And as you can see this gives us this uh, particle fall off based on the small line stroke that we created in the previous composition. But it's not acting the way we want it to at, this, uh, at the moment, so we just need to make some changes to the gravity settings. So twirl them down, put the force all the way up to 500 or even 600, and change the direction to match the um, wind direction from your previous project. So if you recall, that's around 120 to 130. So I'll set it to 125 degrees. Now what I'd also like to do before we finish off this section is just change the radius of new particles and take it down to a value of 1. Just to make it look a little bit more like sand. Okay, so we're ready to bring that into our stone engraving composition. So timeline indicator back to the beginning. Find the text to sand drop it on top of the sand drift but underneath the fake light and scrub forward. Now you can't really see the particles being created properly here so just to make them a little bit more visible I'm going to go to layer styles and set drop shadow. It's a little bit extreme so just drop the, uh, the opacity down to 50 and change the blending mode to soft light. Now I'm just going to render that out and see how it looks. Okay, as you can see from this very short uh, RAM preview, the particle effects are actually taking place a little bit too early. So just as I did for the mask wipe on the uh, text layer, I'm just going to offset the particle layer about half a second in, just so that it um, matches up with the wipe that we created for the text. Okay, that's looking much better. Now one more step. I'm just going to create a new adjustment layer. Go to the Effects and Presets panel, type in Curves, and drag the Curves adjustment onto the adjustment layer. And we're just going to give this a little bit of an S-curve to bring out the uh, shadows and detail a little bit more. Okay, I think I'm ready to render that stage, so um, I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so this is how it looks now that it's been rendered. Um, that's part three pretty much finished with. Um, join me in part four 
when I'll be creating the inlaid gold text that you saw in the demo. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.